Hey guys, how you doing? So, this is what's going on in the news. See these guys here, amongst others? The Twitters and the Googles and the Facebook Meta and several other companies are laying off tons and tons of people. Thousands and tens of thousands in the case of Meta. So what's going on here? Should you be concerned as a developer that all these huge tech companies are laying off everybody? Short answer is no. Short answer is no, because if you actually dig below the surface, you realize a few key facts. Fact number one, a lot of the people, if not the vast majority of people being laid off are not developers, not developers. Number one. Number two, these companies during the zero interest rate environment, which is meaning money was super cheap, they were spending money like crazy. They were hiring like fools. We've seen all kinds of videos of people going around showing how they were spending their days drinking lattes and eating meals at Facebook and Twitter. You know, there was a lot of dead wood, as they say, in the business. A lot of people there who weren't really doing anything. So when the interest rates goes up, it forces companies to actually be proper and strict about how they're spending their money because money now costs interest, right? If you're borrowing money at 4 or 5%, it's very expensive versus borrowing at 0% or near 0%. So they did the inevitable, they being Facebook and Twitter and so forth, they started laying off the dead wood because it was starting to cost them a lot of money. It was starting to become a serious issue. So, for example, with Twitter, that's the most obvious example. When Musk took it over, he found that he, he was able, to, I think they let go 80% of the people. 80%, 80%. Now, a lot of people who don't know anything about business were going, ah, oh, that's going to bankrupt Twitter. Uh. I Right away, I knew that was not going to bankrupt Twitter because, in fact, it was quite the opposite. Because I heard that they had eight or nine thousand employees, eight or nine thousand employees to manage a texting app. That is crazy. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Eight, nine thousand? I couldn't believe it. I know because I've never developed apps that big, but I've developed lots and lots of apps that manage communications between people. Sending images and sending text, editing text, that kind of stuff, right? Twitter. Um, I had a dating site as an example. I didn't have, you know, I only had 17,000 members. But nonetheless, I was running that thing. This was back in the 90s. I running this, this thing off an ADSL line in my apartment. And it's just me. And I'm running it like no problem. It was like a hobby thing for me. I could have had 100 times as many people on the system. No problem. Just me. And this is back with 1990s technology. Things are so much more powerful these days. So when I heard Twitter had 9,000 or 8,000, 9,000 people, I said, this is crazy, this is crazy. So firing 80% and everything's running fine, that's, 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 uh, that's to be expected, right? So Facebook, same thing. They went crazy with their, well, meta, with their uh, virtual reality world, which I don't think is, I don't know. I like the Oculus just for the boxing simulation game it's a good exercise but beyond that i don't know until they get rid of these huge giant goggles who wants to wear these big goggles it's too encumbering right they have to get like little mini mini glasses or something. then then i can see a project like that working perhaps but anyway so again as you see time and time again in an environment where central banks lower the interest rates to practically zero you have what the economists would call malinvestment, meaning bad investment, meaning people doing silly things in terms of their investing because money is so cheap. They go, well, let's go. Let's try this crazy idea. Let's try that crazy idea. So that is the other reason why we're seeing a huge amount of layoffs hitting the tech space. It's one of the main reasons anyways, because you saw a lot of malinvestment in the last several years because money interest rates were so low. So we're just seeing a normal corrective measure. Now, fortunately for developers, it's not really a development thing. There's plenty of jobs in development. Although there are ghost jobs, there's no question. People are putting, employers are putting out 
job postings that are not really there. But yeah, most of the layoffs are non-coders. The coders that get laid off are the deadwood coders, prob- probably, not always the case, but you know, I speak in generalities. I haven't done any ex- exhaustive studies. So I don't know every case. I'm sure somebody can come up with individual cases. Here's a few simple lessons will help you navigate this situation. Number one, be very valuable. Be very valuable. Remember, when you are writing code for somebody, whether you're a freelancer or working for somebody, you are providing a service. You are a service provider, which means you're making people's lives easier. The easier you can make people's lives, the more they're going to appreciate you. So make people's lives easier. Now, that doesn't mean bend over backwards and let them uh, take advantage of you. Of course, that's a matter of interpretation these days. But if you come through, make people's lives easier, they're going to be very reluctant to want to fire you. On the other hand, if you are uh, feel entitled and you cause people trouble, they're not going to want to hire you. That's just the way it is. I just want to do a little tangent here on entitlement. It feels good to feel that you deserve something. It feels good initially to feel that you're owed something or you've been wrong. It feels good. You know, oh, it's not my fault. But in the end, this attitude is very self-defeating. Very self-defeating. When you can extricate from, when you can pull yourself out of that rut of, uh, of uh, feeling aggrieved is very empowering. So I'm suggesting that you don't allow yourself to fall into that trap. This is going to help you ultimately, you. It's very empowering, ironically, to not feel that you've been wrong, to just take responsibility. And some people think my attitude Maybe it's taken to an extreme. But for example, I walk my talk. Many years ago, when I got a deadly blood disease, I was hospitalized for three to to five days. It's been decades, I forget exactly. I was hospitalized for three to five days. And then I was in the hospital twice a week, getting my blood drawn, being medicated. Uh, This went on for like a year, year and a half. I forget now, but it's a long time. And uh, so not the most pleasant experience, but early on, even though it was an idiopathic, meaning from within, meaning they don't know what it is, at the end of the day, what happened is I was training really hard. I wanted to become a professional fighter. I was eating crappy food, and I was working at a nightclub, well, nightclubs as a bouncer, three to four nights a week, back home at four in the morning. This uh, lifestyle is not conducive to health. So what I believe happened is that my body basically just broke and the idiopathic-based blood disorder formed and almost killed me. So again, it was a fluky thing, very rare, fairly rare rather, but nonetheless it happened. And I, uh, through taking care of myself, eating properly, blah, 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 I haven't had any issues for you know 30 years, over 30 years now. Now, over 30 years now. So, you know, I took responsibility way back then, not feeling pity for myself for a a, a fairly dangerous blood disorder. And it was very self-empowering. So anyway, do what you will with this information. That's up to you. But yes, if you're looking to become a coder, you're getting into development, you are a developer, just make yourself more invaluable, more valuable, Make yourself invaluable to the organization and company. They're gonna, they're gonna be, you're going to be the last one they're going to want to fire. And if you are good at what you do, you'll just find other jobs pretty quickly in other companies. So keep working at it. Don't let this uh, normal cycle of events dis- dissuade you from jumping into the game. I teach code because I think it is, till this day, I still think it is one of the most powerful skill sets you can invest in for yourself. It has served me so well. And as soon as I find that coding is no longer useful, I will stop telling people to learn to code. When that day comes, I can guarantee you, I will say, now, now you want to do this, that, or the other thing. That's it. In my mentoring program, the foundation, of course, is coding. It's fundamental and it's extensive, but there's much more to the program 
that I know is extremely important. So don't think that I am telling you, uh, I'm, not, I'm not giving you rainbows and unicorn story here because I think I have coding courses to sell. I'll just pivot into other things. I do other things already. It's only part of it. My goal when I mentor people, my goal with these YouTube videos is just to exchange with you of my decades and decades of experience is as a developer, as an entrepreneur, life experience, et cetera, health experience, so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls I fell into. And uh, yeah, and do well. All right, so don't let it worry you. Just keep on track, stay on course, stay on target. People will make it through. Remember, this is an example where having FU stash, which I've been talking about for a long time, you can find videos on my YouTube about it, comes in very, very handy. So there you go. So don't let all these, again, don't let these layoffs uh, put you off. Everything will be fine. This is just a normal boom and bust cycle I've seen several times already. We'll be back in a boom again. So if you are a Deadwood type of employer, you will be able to find your Deadwood job in the next few years probably. <laughs> but you don't want to be the Deadwood employee, right? Nah, nobody is. Nobody is. Nobody who watches this channel anyway. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.